everybody. I'm Dave Weiss. I'm a flutist in uh, Brooklyn, New York, and I work in the uh, New York City area. And I'm sitting here, I'm surrounded by a bass flute. Specifically, this is the King Mabrannan transverse uh, bass flute, a rather traditional design, as well as the Kingma uh, upright design. But let me talk about the, the traditional one first. So give me a second. I'm going to break away for a second and move this out of the way. Back in the day when I was, you know, in high school, college, I, there was only uh, this type of bass flute, this transverse, and to the point you would just call it, this is a, a bass flute, you know. Uh, I, I don't think anybody had a low B like this one. And this is a Kingma brand and design. Uh, Ava Kingma makes them in her place in, in Holland. But uh, uh, Mr. Brannon, who needs no introduction, you know, one of the greatest names in, in flute making history, uh, helped with the design. I know they talk frequently and they uh, uh, collaborate on many of their instruments. And uh, in any case, uh, this is the traditional design. It is a beautiful instrument. Uh, I learned on an Armstrong way back in the day, and I used an Armstrong professionally. And, and back in those days, uh, uh, the rudel cart, the English instrument, was the instrument everybody wanted. And they do have a, have a beautiful, beautiful sound. But they had a, a very unusual tubing over here. It kind of zigzagged, as I remembered. Or, or maybe it was a circular thing. That was it. It was like a circular thing. Uh, it was heavy. It was like if you would play, it would take you down like that. Um, and yeah, no good. Not for me. That I, I I didn't go for that. I used that Armstrong for many years. I did a lot of recording sessions, and I was very happy with it. But I came across these the King of Flutes, and I just fell in love with them. And I've been playing them now over ten years, and spectacular. And so the transverse one. This is a very traditional model. Uh, there's there's no quarter tone mechanism on this one, but I, I'm pretty sure that Ava will make that. She is a, just a brilliant genius of a designer. She'll come up with almost anything, whatever you're looking for, actually, probably. Uh, she can probably make it. Um, there's a low B on this. I don't know if I were to have a, a transverse flute, if I would have a low B. I think there are, that brings in some weight issues, but, you know, everyone's different. And... This is adjustable up here over, you know, at the top of the, the tube and also, of course, the head joint. So you have two uh, places of adjustment. And it's really important to keep these tenons clean, on, not on all your instruments, of course, but especially these big instruments. It can really be disastrous if they're, they're dirty and you're trying to, to, to turn it. Even just for tuning, you can knock the rods off. You have leaks. You have problems, especially you're in performance. You know, you don't need that. So keep these clean. It's really important. Um, I line the instru instrument up kind of like that. You can probably see that on camera the way I do it. You have to find the weight distribution, the center of gravity. And it's not just how you feel it like this. It's how it... When you push it into your chops and and your plane and okay is it over here is it over here that's vitally important to, to find what works for you and everyone's different you're going to have a different line up here you know and don't anyone tell you oh it should be directly above the instrument like this or something like that that's that's not true all these instruments are different and you find what works for you so if you were to try these out definitely uh have a little a shimmy and shake and see, well, I'm going to try it like this. I want to try it like this. Make sure these tenons are clean before you do that, okay? Sometimes these distributors, they won't clean these out as the way they should. And I've seen that before. Make sure these are all clean before you try these out. Okay, so this is the standard bass. You cannot get a better instrument than this in a standard bass. I remember... Uh, <clears throat> Several years ago, maybe seven, eight years ago, I went to one of these uh, flu conventions here in, in the States. And uh, I go by Ava's booth, and there's this looking at me, and I'm like, what is that? You know. And she says, well, this is the new invention. And I'm like, really? Is, what is it? And she said, well, it's a bass flute, but it's an upright bass flute. And I was intrigued. And so she picks it up. We call it the Hoover. And I say, why? And she says... Oh, it's like a it's it's like the vacuum cleaner. It's like <laughs> that's where it gets its name from. So, um, okay. Well, then I sat down and I played it for a while, and I played it for a while, and I played it for a while. I played it like a good forty five minutes an hour, sitting in the booth over and over and over again. This is what's known as a game changer, and that means wow. 
You know, this is this is a different type of instrument. And uh, uh, I just look at some of the features on it. I can look at the, the the keys or the things above the cups. I don't even know what you call these things. I, I just play them. I don't design them, you know. Um, but uh, it just fits the left hand and the right hand like a glove. There's It's contoured in a way. It's really quite interesting. And there's three points where you can make uh, adjustments. Of course, the head, but also this on the, the upper part of the tube. I don't know. Do you call this the crook? And then it the top of the very top of the tube so there's three points so of, of adjustment so you can figure out whichever way it is that you want to play this instrument you know and that's so important and also this one does have a low B you notice there's a peg too that's what it sits on it's an adjustable peg you make it as tall as you want and also there's this I'm sitting right now you get a taller peg for when you're standing if you know in concert or maybe that's just the way you want to play it why not? It's very light, and I, just to show you how much I use this, look at the uh, the lip plate. That's the outer. It's, this is a a well used bass flute. Okay, this is not sitting in the closet gathering dust. I use this baby. You know, it's this is uh, bringing home the bacon, so to speak. Uh, I remember the the first time I got it. I think I was working on a soundtrack, something something for Mar the Marco Polo. It was a TV series for Netflix, I think, and uh, I was just exploring this instrument while we were doing the soundtrack and it it just kind of freed me up it's just the, the lack of the weight is is really it's a game changer it's it's, it's revolutionary so I would encourage any of you that are interested in a bass to definitely give this a shot and see see what I'm talking about it's an incredible instrument um, again this one has uh, no quarter tone mechanism but I'm, I'm quite sure that is uh, available. Uh, I like to say I'm old fashioned. That's the way that I played because I'm kind of old, you know. So <laughs> that's the that's the way I play, you know. It's the, I'm I, I don't like learning all these new keys. It's just not what I do, you know. But uh, I learned to, to bend and slide kind of the old fashioned way, you know. So that's what I like to do. So. Uh, so this is the, and uh, just note that also this is Ava's design. This is a, a King Mabranin, but this is uh, just the the, uh, the Kingma flute. So uh, this is her own unique design. So that's your quick tour of these two remarkable instruments. Uh, I'm Dave Weiss. I'm uh, in Brooklyn, New York. I'm in New York City a lot. And uh, please check out my YouTube channel. That's David Weiss Flute on YouTube. Uh, there's a lots of uh, uh, Kingma uh, videos and uh, a, a good sampling of all my work in theater, film, and TV. And of course, go to Kingma's site and see her amazing collection of instruments and all the modifications that she makes on uh, and accommodates uh, people for whatever it is that they're looking for. Okay, so uh, thanks for stopping by. Check out the other bass flute uh, 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 video that I made. It was the making or how to get the famous James Bond bass flute sound, which I used both these instruments on. And that, that one is pretty self-explanatory. I think that's probably the most recognizable sound of bass flutes, and that's why we made the video. So check that out. Uh, thanks for stopping by, and uh, take care. Thank you.